Hello! Today's stories come from r slash am I the butthole. We've got four stories today, and while the subreddit is am I the butthole, they're not to be confused with entitled people because there is no question who the bad guys are in this collection. Our first is short, but hit number one for the week. We're starting with, am I the butthole for not taking down my video that was a gift from my best man? I have a sister that's six years older than me. My parents, for years, cancel on me last minute because of my sister. I have a basketball game. OP, sorry, sister doesn't feel like going out. I am graduating. OP, sorry, sister had a bad day at work. They have missed both major and smaller events in my life because of her meltdowns. I met the love of my life. We decided to tie the knot. From the beginning, I told my parents how I am worried my sister will ruin another special moment in my life. My mom told me over and over again it would not happen. The day of my wedding, I received a voicemail from my mom saying they couldn't come because my sister's dog was sick and she was upset. I was hurt. My best man, however, is a jokester. He took my phone then, went to my fiancé and asked if he could post a video of our wedding as a gift on social media. She loved his idea. I had no idea about it until I came home. Our honeymoon was at a lakeside cabin. No cell service. The post caption was, My best friend, he is an amazing person, even if his parents never showed up for him. Video with still pictures of us next to her parents, me on the dance floor cutting the cake, where you would normally see both parents in wedding pictures. The sound behind the video was my mom's voicemail explaining how they couldn't come because my sister's dog was sick. I came home a week later to hundreds of messages, family members from both sides insisting I take it down. I was told my sister hasn't stopped crying. My mom is refusing to leave the house. I may be the butthole here. I didn't take it down when I got my messages. I didn't call my family back right away. I waited until my vacation time was over at work and enjoyed my time with my wife in our new home before I contacted anyone. My dad told me to take down the video. It was just a bad night for them, that they will make it up to me and my wife for not coming. My reply was exactly how do you plan to make up my wedding? It's a once in a lifetime thing. You choose to ignore my feelings on the whole matter. Then he just repeated he will make it up to me. I told him I would take down the video only when he made up missing my wedding. Flustered, we both hung up the phone before we both said things we shouldn't have. Am I the butthole here? I could have just taken down the video. Oh my gosh, missing a major life event for a sick dog is crazy in my mind. Not the butthole. The parents still could have gone. Even if a dog being ill was a legitimate excuse to miss a family wedding, surely it wouldn't take all three of them to care for the dog. Let's check out the comments where we'll find much love and support for OP. Snazzy Susie Q said, Not the butthole. The truth hurts sometimes and your parents and sister just got whammied. Your friend is awesome. Please leave the video up. Bells Noir added, Seconded. Your friend didn't manipulate their words. Your parents would have nothing to cry about if they hadn't done anything wrong. They skipped your wedding with one seriously pathetic excuse. Let them feel the effects of that. Not so simple and sweet said, Your friend is the true MVP in this story. OP, keep that video up until the end of time. Your parents need to be reminded just how much they failed you and favored your sister. Your family doesn't like it. Lucky for you, you just married into a new one. Not the butthole. Which Pudding said, Not the butthole. I think I'm in love with the best man. He absolutely showed your parents' favoritism and hypocrisy in the best way ever. I hope there will never be an invite to a baby shower, etc. Someone else said, He was angry seeing his friend get hurt over and over. I love that kind of friend. Oceans Apart added, His friend is more family than his family are. Cell Reddit said, Not the butthole. Every single person at your wedding saw that they didn't show up. So what exactly are they hoping to hide by taking it down? If they felt justified not coming, stand by that decision. Defend it. If you can't, then you know you did something wrong. They deserve it. They can't make up missing your wedding for no good reason. Hard Rain is Falling added, There are legitimate reasons for missing your kid's wedding. Anthrax exposure, caught in a hurricane, deathly ill due to rabid weasel bite. Your favorite child's pet being sick is not one of them. They were hoping to hide the fact that they're garbage parents who don't love their child. Thanks to the greatest friend ever, that's no longer possible. Our second story would have me reconsidering my engagement. It's titled, Am I the butthole for insisting my niece is co-flower girl with my fiancé's niece? My fiancé and I are planning our wedding. She comes from a large family. She has five sisters. Most of them have kids. 
Four of her sisters are her bridesmaids. One is serving as maid of honor. I come from a smaller family, just my parents, my sister, and my niece, Bryn. Bryn is three years old and pretty much my best pal. I'm her godfather. I love her to bits. I didn't care when my fiancé didn't choose my sister to be a bridesmaid, and likewise, my sister was cool with it. I did feel some sort of way because I have all four of my fiancé's brother-in-laws in my wedding party at fiancé's request, but ultimately, it's her side of the party. She can do what she wants. Then it came time to pick the younger roles in the wedding. Her older nephews are junior groomsmen. The younger is the ring bearer. She only has one niece, Aubrey, who's four. My fiancé wants her to be the flower girl. I said that's fine, but I also want Bryn to be one. They can walk down the aisle together. It'd be super cute. Bryn loves playing with Aubrey, so they get along. My fiancé says she wants our wedding to be traditional, so there can only be one flower girl. I suggested Bryn could hold a sign or something while Aubrey threw flowers. My fiancé said no. She can sit with my sister and parents. At this point, I insisted and said Bryn would be flower girl. I texted my sister and asked. She agreed. My fiancé got upset, and I said, It's my day too. Bryn means a great deal to me, and she'll be in the wedding. My fiancé and Aubrey's mom are mad at me, saying I'm stealing Aubrey's spotlight. Am I the butthole? Update. Okay, wow, did not expect this to blow up the way it did. Thank you to everyone who reached out. This morning, my fiancé and I sat down to talk about the wedding in general. I brought up Bryn and Aubrey. My fiancé just kept parroting, It's tradition. Let Aubrey have the spotlight. She shot down compromise after compromise. Aubrey walks first, Bryn blows bubbles, or holds a sign, etc. Finally, my fiancé was honest. She doesn't want Bryn in our wedding because Bryn has Down syndrome. She said everyone will be looking at her, taking pity, etc. Turns out, it wasn't about a spotlight on Aubrey, but my fracking fiancé. I told her to frack herself, called her ableist, and said, don't worry, there won't be a spotlight to steal anymore because there's no wedding. I left our apartment, staying at my sister's and playing with Bryn. My phone has been blowing up with texts and calls from my fiancé. Magically, she's ready to compromise now. I need time, but I'm likely done. Y'all were right. Wow. Definitely not the butthole. But OP already knows that. Thank goodness he dodged this bullet. His presumably ex-fiancé is obviously a real piece of work. Gross. On to the comments where posters try to point out all the red flags on this one. Sailor Angel said, Not the butthole. Just an observation. Your fiancé sees this as her wedding, not our wedding. Honestly, if it were me, and I may be just way too petty, I would tell her that either Bryn is in as co-flower girl, or none of your fiancé's brother-in-laws are groomsmen. Just replace them with friends or co-workers. But again, just an observation. If this is your fiancé's reaction, good luck, buddy. Someone else added, for real, she already took over both halves of the bridal party, so the least she can do is give him a co-flower girl. Two for traditional. It's not. Traditionally, you'd have multiple flower girls. It was a sign of wealth and nobility to have multiple child attendants. That started becoming less common in the Victorian period solely in the lower classes, solely because of poverty. That's where your traditional argument comes from. You know what's not traditional? Junior groomsmen. Have as many people in your wedding party as you want and can afford, not the butthole. Someone else added, I've never even heard of a junior groomsman. Definitely not traditional. I'm X said, I believe junior groomsmen are traditionally called page boys. Also, William and Kate had four flower girls and two page boys. Harry and Meghan had six flower girls and four page boys. The English royal family has basically started all wedding traditions we have today. So even if they think it's traditional to have a ton of kids attending, I'm sure your wedding wouldn't be ruined by having two flower girls. Someone else said, not the butthole. Can you try to talk to your fiancé about give and take? Does she not like your sister? Something seems off here, and it may go on in your family life. OP replied, she likes my sister, and I know my sister likes her. They're not close, but get along. My fiancé has had some jealousy issues with Bryn. I am not as close with Aubrey, mainly because we don't see her much. My fiancé also feels I'm too close with Bryn. My sister is a single mom, her husband passed, and I'm the only male role model in Bryn's life. I go to her ballet recitals, taught her how to ride her trike, babysit her overnight. It never interferes with time with my fiancé, but she thinks it's weird. On to our third story, which is from last month, but can't be missed. Am I the butthole for pressing charges against my girlfriend's friend for stealing my doll? I'm a 26-year-old male and have been with my still-girlfriend, a 26-year-old female, for almost four years. 
Last year, I gave her a key to my house. She spends a few days there, but we don't live together full time. A few days ago, I had to make a quick trip for work. She asked me if she could invite a few of her friends to the house for a girls' night. It was on Thursday. I accepted. I returned yesterday in the morning. The first thing I noticed was that the rag doll was missing from the wall. My first instinct was to call my girlfriend to ask if she had put it somewhere else. She denied it and said the doll was there. It wasn't. I checked the GPS of the doll. Yes, it has a GPS. The GPS marked the house of one of her friends. Let's call her Jess. I tried to be nice and told my girlfriend to tell her friend to bring it back before 5 p.m. and I'll pretend this never happened or I'll involve the police. She tried to fight it, but I told her about the GPS. Well, my girlfriend called me back saying that Jess denied having the doll. We had a huge argument and warned her that I wasn't playing about getting the police involved. I waited until 5 and went to the police. We went to her house and got the doll back. I pressed charges. My girlfriend and I had a bigger argument about me pressing charges. They, including her, knew the doll was made by my father. They could have stolen anything else and I wouldn't bat an eye. I gave her friend a chance and she tried to play stupid. They have been calling me a butthole and to drop the charges. Edit. I will answer some of your questions here, but if you have more, I will try to answer them. The doll is with me. It's a rag doll. Better said, it's a raggedy and doll. My father had many hobbies. He tried making dolls and was planning to sell them, but the first one he made was a freaking Raggedy Ann doll, so it didn't last. He was too manly to sell Raggedy Ann dolls, ridiculous, I know. He gave me that one, and actually he made four more for my best friends. The doll was hanging in my room, but once he passed away, I hung it in the living room. It has X's as eyes and looks creepy because it looks dead. It has a GPS because my home was robbed seven months ago. I don't care if they clear the house, as long as they leave the doll. I've got more expensive items she could have stolen, so I don't know why she would steal the bloody doll other than a sick joke. My girlfriend never complained about it, at least not to me. I haven't talked to her other than telling me to drop the charges. I will talk to her tomorrow to find out why she let her friend take the doll. They've been here before and never did anything like this. And about our relationship, because right now, I'm thinking about breaking up. I hope I do this right. Before the update, I want to give some context about why the doll is so important to me and to correct myself for saying he was too manly to sell dolls. My father got sick just before I was 15, kidney failure. He retired and he filled his time with hobbies. A year after his diagnosis, I came from school one day and he was finishing the doll. I asked him if he was going to sell it. He said yes, but not anymore. I asked him why and he replied with, who would buy a doll from a man who looks angry 24-7? Before his diagnosis, my father would have laughed about it. He would have made more to fill a big box, knock on every door, and sell them all. But now he was worried about what people would say if he could sell them, anxious, less energetic, less confident, doubtful, afraid. None of this was in his mind before. The illness was not only beating his body, but also his mind. We thought we had made peace with his decease at the time he had left, but reality finally caught up with us. It was a turning point in the way we moved forward. I have other things my father made. I carry some with me. Others are in a safe. I tried to put the doll in a box, in a closet. I even tried to give it away once. I just don't have the heart to do it. It gives me peace to see it out there. The tracker may seem excessive, but not for me. My ex knew about this. The update. Many of you hit the nail. My ex came over yesterday. She was a mess. She explained that she actually had a problem with the doll, but instead of telling me, she went to her friends. They told her that it was creepy, weird for a grown man to have a doll, and that I was too attached to it. This only reinforced her feelings. This was a regular topic between them, and they came up with ideas to get rid of the doll, but she never followed them, until Thursday. Her friends were fed up with her for not doing something as we were planning to move in together. Before they left, my ex and Jess talked. They agreed that Jess would take the doll and my ex would take care of the rest. My ex forgot the GPS, and when I confronted her, she panicked. She actually called Jess and told her about it, but Jess told her not to worry, that I wouldn't do anything about it. But she was obviously wrong. I broke up with her. She tried to plead and even suggested couples therapy, but I just couldn't stand being with her anymore. I called Mr. Lawyer, and he told me that we can continue with the process, but nothing will come of it, even with my ex's confession. He will try either way. I've already changed the locks, and I'm buying cameras for the whole house. I'd like to thank all of you who took the time with my mess. I never thought this will get the attention it got. I will try to answer more questions if you have them. I hope everything goes well with all of you and thank you again. I can't believe people like this. It's really infuriating. 
Who in their right mind would even come up with an idea like this, let alone a friend group? Good riddance. Sounds like OP's ex would turn to her friend group to resolve everything, rather than being an adult and having a conversation with her partner. Others also questioned the thought process of the girlfriend in the comments. Sleepy Lil B said, A man who installs a GPS into a treasured keepsake is not someone who won't do anything about it when it's stolen, and he can see where it is, Jess. Someone else said, right? If I have a GPS on anything, it's probably because I want to find it and value it highly. That's some dumb logic she had going on there. Unusual Apple said, Nail was hit right on the head. I feel bad for OP though. It's obviously incredibly meaningful to him and the fact his girlfriend was willing to destroy that and hurt him for nothing more than not having to see it is despicable. Fox Scribbles added, a real partner would say, Hey, I find this creepy, but I know it means a lot to you. Can you move it to someplace I don't have to see it all of the time? But why communicate when you can attempt to destroy highly personal items and destroy your entire relationship in the process? Tristan the Viking said, I have become a big fan of the idiot partner plans an idiot heist to get rid of ugly decoration with sentimental value instead of just talking about moving it genre. Oh dang, here we go, added, it does make for a top shelf hate read. Wentwin said, What was the one from a while ago where OP was older than his significant other and threw out a pouch with a cigarette butt in it? That one was so fracking infuriating. And in case you missed it, I actually just read the pouch story last week. I will try to link it at the end of the video. Our last story has a wholesome ending to show that there are some normal people with normal relationships on Reddit. The story is, am I the butthole for not helping my wife buy a dental office when she insisted to get a prenup before marriage? My wife and I are in our very late 30s. When we were getting married, we both were making about the same. Neither of us had anything. I didn't want a prenup because I don't think that's how a marriage should work. But my wife wanted a prenup because she was going to dental school and thought when she opens her own clinic, she will make way more money than me and didn't want to share any of that. Long story short, reluctantly, I agreed to the prenup. That also has a provision for future assets. And we basically have had separate finances ever since. Everything is split 50-50 for the most part. Edit to clarify, 50-50 when it comes to shared expenses like groceries or going out. She doesn't pay anything toward the mortgage. She pays about 30% of the mortgage as rent each month. Recently, she has started thinking about opening her own clinic and wants to buy a place which costs about $2 million give or take, including any potential renovations and all the equipment. She won't get approval for a $2 million loan and does not have 20% to put down, not to mention... She would need some buffer as well to pay employees and etc. for a couple of months until business picks up. Part of it is understandable. University and dental school were expensive and she started working later in life. But she also, in general, spent money liberally. I graduated at 22 and over the years bought three houses and save up regularly to buy more rental properties and invest in stocks. I can help her get a loan and pay her down payment, but since she wanted a prenup when we got married, I don't see why I should just give her or even lend her that much money. I told her I can help her with the loan, pay the down payment, be a co-signer, and pay the expenses until it is profitable if she splits the clinic 50-50 and no need to pay me back. Or I can loan her the money at 8% interest. She started losing it and being shocked at how I would even think about trying to take a percentage of her business. Friends and family say we are married and she is my wife so I should help her succeed in her career and give her the money interest-free and she will pay me back whenever she can. I don't share this sentiment. I think she made it clear how she wanted our financial lives to be when she insisted on a prenup. Also, people might say 8% is a lot, but keep in mind she can't get a loan on her own. If I'm risking $600,000 on down payment and expenses for a few months, when no bank would, this is the interest rate I would be comfortable with, and she should be able to pay it back. The way buying dental clinics works is they are valued based on how much cash flow they currently have, And based on the clinic she is looking at, she should be able to make good money. Anyway, people around us are saying I'm being unreasonable and greedy. I disagree. Wife wanted a prenup and separate finances. She is getting just that. I don't see why I should help her with no benefit to me. So am I the butthole? Update. A lot of people have been asking for an update even to this day, but two weeks after I made my post, I got a new phone and lost access to this account. I didn't remember my username or the password and the account was made with an email that doesn't exist. Anyway, finally remembered my username and guessed the password a few times last week and here we are. 
Buying a dental practice, getting loans, sorting things out between me and the wife took time. After a bunch of back and forth with my wife, weeks of sleeping in separate rooms after we fought, we finally got down to talking about what the point of the prenup was in the first place and what were our thoughts about our marriage and our kid. We didn't see ourselves ever getting divorced and still loved each other. So after some convincing the wife that the prenup is worthless if we don't intend to ever get divorced, we came to the conclusion that the prenup isn't serving any purpose and decided to cancel it altogether. So the whole prenup business is gone for good now. Following that, now that everything is 50-50 by default, I'm helping with the expenses as stated in the original post, and we are back to our lives and to celebrating this new chapter. We are going to have a second kid, which is exciting, although scary at the same time, since we are in our late 30s now. We always wanted two kids. I don't think I mentioned it in the post that we have one kid together, but I think I had mentioned it in a comment. Anyways, most likely no more updates going forward, but thank you all for your input. I love happy endings. So happy for OP and his wife. Just goes to show that you get out what you put in. These two are obviously willing to work towards building a life together. So lovely. But perhaps I'm looking through rose-colored glasses because everyone involved gets roasted in the comments. Someone said, what a fun marriage. Someone else added, it could be a movie. Spreadsheets, a romance. In response to, to celebrate we're having a second kid, Thomas J. Marlowe said, ha ha ha, incessant laughter continues. Messy chaos added, well, nothing says this is a great time to have a second child like taking on $2 million in debt and starting a new business with huge liabilities. Melodic advice said, Yes, a second kid always makes everything better. Someone else added, and if that doesn't work, three is the charm. Someone else said, misery loves company. Ranting Robot said, the endless whining of the wealthy is so tiresome. Her, wah, I want $600,000 without interest. Huff, I don't think legal agreements I sign should apply to me. Him. (laughs) I just casually have three homes and buy new phones like whenever. Also, I like fracking with people using money. Any kid growing up in an environment that toxic is going to turn out like Ethan Couch. Gorevoid added, quote, we had nothing when we got married. So anyway, then I bought three houses and need to know what the best way to invest this $2 million is. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing and leaving a comment. Thanks and bye for now.